This is season one, episode five of the Beyond the Food Pro series, and today we're going to talk root cause. But this time, the real root cause. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food show. I'm Stephanie Dozier, a clinical nutritionist and emotional eating expert, creator of the Going to Beyond the Food method, and founder of the Going to Beyond the Food Academy corporate executive turned health expert with my own journey with weight, body image, and food, it's now my mission to help smart, successful women like you live confidently right now and unconditionally. Ready, sister? Let's do this. Welcome back, my dear sister, my colleagues, Stephanie Dozia here, clinical nutritionist and If you're a regular listener of this podcast and you're just stumbling upon this, know that this special series, the pro series is built for health professional that are wanting to help you, the regular woman wanting to stop going crazy with food and body image. And I'm teaching to them directly. You're welcome to listen, but know that it wasn't designed with you in mind. Now for you, the professional, this is the fifth out of an eight part series. And we've divided the episode into two group. One is one group is about the professional skills. And the other one is about business skills, because when we do practice an on diet approach, we are having to build our own business because we're not prevailed to this whole traditional medical system or insurance system. Uh, Our services aren't covered. So we have to build our own business. So today it's about professional skill set and know that the first episode of this series, season one, episode one was about first do no arm where I discuss the whole traditional model of nutrition and how it is perhaps causing more harm to our client than good. And then episode three was all about where the heck do we start? If we're not going to ditch out meal plan and uh, food list, what do we do with our client? So now today we're talking about the root cause. And this is something uh, that I personally in my own practice, struggle with for a number of years. Uh, And it's because of my training, right? Like most of you, I was trained uh, in a holistic model of health, and also did some um, training in functional medicine. And in both model, and, and mainly all alternative health model, we're trained to look at root cause, we're trained to identify root cause, Uh, to ask a lot of questions and to guide and recommend for our client um, to look into all of their bodies and into the root cause. But um, what I was doing was only providing short-term relief to my client. Um, And ethically, I had to ask myself the question, like, what am I doing? Like, I spent all these years training and, and going to all those courses, yet an application, it's not working long term. Why am I into this? You have to remember that this is my second career. This is the X number of business I've built. And and I'm doing this from my heart, right? I'm not into this, like, as a career builder and, and wanting to build a multi-million dollar business. I'm like, like, I want to help people and this is not working. And I had to ask myself the real question, am I addressing the real root cause? And the answer was no. And I had to face that and change the way that I was uh, working with client because I wasn't really addressing the real root cause. Now, if you don't know what root cause is, let's begin that. Let's step back for a few minutes here and understand what I mean by root cause. And and root cause is something that I learned not in the health business, but actually in my prior career in the world of retail and operation, where 
when we had a result that wasn't what we were looking for, we always went backwards and tried to identify where the problem was, the root cause as to why our result or our processes weren't resulting in what we wanted. And we were trained to ask the question, why, 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 why? And when I came to the world of health and in holistic health and functional medicine, I found the same process, right? You have a health condition and you want to know what you need to do to help this person. You ask the question, why enough time till you get to the root cause? Here's another analogy for you. Let's imagine that you have weed growing on your lawn. You have multiple options to deal with that. You perhaps can just pick up your lawn more, mow the lawn, and you have solved the problem temporarily, right? Your lawn looks good for perhaps, I don't know, a week, 10 days. I'm no expert in lawn, but it will look good temporarily because you solve the problem at the surface level by addressing the weed itself. However, the weed will grow back because the roots are still there. Now, if you want to make sure the weed never grow back on your lawn, you will go and dig the roots out. That's what addressing the root cause is. People come to us in the field of health and nutrition because they want to address a problem that they have. And we are trying to say and help them with what they eat, when they eat and how they eat. But as I shared with you earlier and in episode one, it doesn't work, right? People disappear. They don't finish the protocol. You see them a couple years on the road and they've reverted back. Why is that? If we were addressing the root cause, like with the weed on our lawn, that wouldn't happen. Now, healing the root cause is important. However, what we have to understand is that the human brain doesn't like that. The human brain loves short-term results. They like, the, our brain loves to see immediate observable results. And that's why dieting is so freaking popular because it works short-term. It gives the client and you, the professional, instantaneous results. However, behind that is the long-term unsustainable result and people reverting back. On the other hand, when we find the real root cause, that doesn't happen. However, the process is tedious, it's complicated, and it's scary. Very often, people, clients that are not ready to do the work, and when you help them identify the root cause, they'll run away because they don't want to see this. Their brain is not ready. They're not ready. They want the short-term quick relief. That is why a majority of my client and patient population is 40 plus years old because they've done the short-term relief cycle for 20, 30, 40 years. And they're like, I'm done with this. It doesn't work. Help me. Right? So if I go back to my practice where I thought I was looking at the real root cause, yet I wasn't, how was that showing up? Let me give you a few example here of what I thought to be the root cause, which in fact wasn't. So let's start with binge eating right? Overeating, binge eating. People would come in for that, right? So my solution as per my training was food restriction. And I thought that was the root cause. They just didn't have enough willpower. They weren't restricted enough. They were eating the quote bad food. And that's what's causing them to binge eat. Fast forward today. Here's what I now know. Binge eating is an effect right? It's a symptom. Food restriction is a symptom. 
dieting causes food restriction, but dieting is also a side effect. A side effect of what? Fat phobia and weight stigma. That's the real problem. That's the root cause. So when we look at the top, binge eating, side effect. Food restriction, side effect. Dieting, side effect. Root cause, fat phobia and weight stigma. You see, I wasn't asking why enough time. I was only asking it once or twice when really the layer to get to the root cause was much deeper. But also, I was blinded by my own fat phobia. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with the term fat phobia, fat phobia is the fear and or dislike of fat, of obese, quote unquote, people or fat people or obesity in general. I was fat phobic. Are you? Are you a fat phobic individual? Are you a fat phobic practitioner? Now, you're listening to this alone, you perhaps are willing to answer that by yourself, but are you willing to admit it and to get yourself out of it? Now for me, and I've shared many times, I had a 25 year dieting career and fat phobia for me started very, very young at the age of 12 years old with my first diet. From that moment forward for 25 years, I was afraid of gaining weight. And that is actually what led me to study nutrition. I wanted to fix myself because nothing was working. I'm like, if I actually go to school and learn very complex protocol, it's got to work. All of it was driven by fat phobia. Now, if you're new to this term and you want to know more, you can listen to podcast 237 on that topic. But I had to confront my own fat phobia. Not only was fat phobia preventing me from being the best health professional, it was also preventing me from accessing my own best health. Now, in the science field, fat phobia is actually a recognized term with what begins to be a large body of evidence. A lot of research have been done and a lot more are continuing to be done because it is recognized as a root cause of many health conditions. Now, when we look at research, weight stigma is divided into two categories, experience weight stigma and internalize weight stigma. Experience when weight stigma is when people observe or believe that others have made unfair or negative assumption about them based on their weight or body image. And internalized weight stigma is the process by which people accept weight-based stereotype and make them true about themselves. That's when they create their own thought in their own brain that drives that fear of fatness. What's very interesting when you look at research is internalized weight stigma is more powerful on physical and mental health than experience weight stigma. So just to cement that for you, I'm going to read a quote from uh, one of the well-known researchers in that field, Rebecca Pearl, uh, from the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Some people fear that if people feel too good about their body and themselves, they will not be motivated in healthful eating behavior or physical activity. Study shows the opposite to be true. When people internalize weight stigma and feel bad about themselves because of their weight, they feel less confident in their ability to engage in healthful behavior and are more prone to binge eating, avoiding physical activity, and other behavior that contributes to weight gain. And unfortunately, end quote, and unfortunately, This is the belief of most health professional. And it's perhaps 
your belief up to now. I know it was mine. That was the old school way, the old school model of behavior change that I was thought. It's a model built on punishment and shaming. And that's why so many health pros use before and after picture. If you're ever tempted to use before and after picture, you now know why you should never, ever do that. Because when you do that, you're stigmatizing people in larger body. You're causing you, you the professional, are causing internalized weight stigma to get more profound. And we know that that is even more potent than externalized weight stigma. Weight stigma is the foundation of diet culture. Fat phobia, weight stigma, is the goon of diet culture. Now, goon, a little bit of explanation here. If you're familiar with uh, the culture of ice hockey, you know what goon is. Goon is that violent player that goes around and scare other people on the ice, right? Well, fat phobia is the goon of diet culture. That's why diet culture works so well because it has profound changes in the mental, the thoughts, the mindset, the emotional health of people, particularly women. Now I'm going to pause here to say we have an upcoming episode of this podcast series on feminism and why the non-diet approach for women needs to be different than men. But just enough to say that we do have an evergreen webinar on that. It's going to be inside the show note. It's called Women, Food, and Power. And if you are a health professional working with women, must listen. One hour of training that will likely change the way you're looking at your approach. So if weight stigma and fat phobia is the root cause of why people are coming to see us, why they have hormonal disruption because of the stress of the way they engage with their body because of their fear of fatness, because of their false beliefs around what weight will do to their health, about them not being confident, about having low self-esteem and thinking that if they lose weight, all of a sudden this magic land will open up for them. Because that's what diet culture tells them, right? If I can only eat, lose weight and everything that I've tried before, I always gain the damn, the damn weight back. So let me go see this professional who's going to finally find what's wrong with me and tell me exactly what to eat. So I'm going to lose the weight and all of a sudden my life will unlock. Problem is not with their food, as we said. Problem is their fear of gaining weight, their fear of not losing weight, or altogether, the way that they see themselves. So if we know that to be the real root cause, how do we as a practitioner help recover that, help heal that? This is when body image healing needs to come into your practice. This is why body image healing is a centric part of a non-diet approach because we can't avoid it because that is the real problem. And body image healing is the quote, treatment of choice, helping our client make peace with their body. Now, if you're new to this field, and I, I, I think most of you perhaps do not know that, but when you start studying body image and my favorite, my favorite researcher and professor in this field is now a retired uh, teacher, Thomas F. Cash. He is a true pioneer in the psychology of physical appearance and research on body image. Um, he looks at body image and his research demonstrated that body image is multidimensional and encompass the perceptual body image, how you see yourself, the effective body image, how you feel about your body. Cognitive body image is how we think about our body. And then behavioral is how we behave 
as a result of how we see, feel, and think about our body. And that's where his work is revolutionary is because it connected the human behavior to the way we feel about our body. And that's why I'm so strongly talking about the root cause here in the behavior around food and around health to be linked to the way we feel our body and so present for women in to this culture. So adopting an approach that helps your client make peace with their body is essential. We teach in our world, and they're going to be on the food method, body neutrality. It is a clinical approach that I absolutely love because it's not about loving your body. It's about embracing who we are today, even the part that we don't like about ourselves with no expectation of having to love these parts. It's about relieving us from the self-hate and staying in that middle space between body hate and body love with no expectation of having to love it. The goal is to respect and accept your body and engage with your body from a place of neutrality and functionality. Your body is the vehicle through which you experience life and you got to respect it and take care of your body. So helping your client craft a new relationship to their body is essential. And this leads us into connecting body image with health, which is ultimately why people want to work with us, right? Is changing how we engage with our body from control, change, hate, right? Shrinking, (laughs) carving pieces out to actually saying, no, 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 I'm going to respect you and I'm going to take care of you. Now for that, you must, you, the professional must adopt a weight neutral approach to health. Just a, a bit of background here, and it depends on your training. Health is not defined as an absence of disease. Health, as per the World Health Organization, is defined as a complete state of physical, emotional, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And that's essential here. Like we need to re-educate ourselves to what health is and how to take care of our health, but we also need to do this work with our client. So a weight neutral approach to health is based on the respect that not only your weight determines your health. As a fact, as per science, there's many other factor to health. And it can be measured way beyond the weight on the scale. When you adopt a weight neutral approach to health, you take body weight out of the picture. And then you look at what else you can do or that your client can do in their life to take care of their body. As I mentioned earlier, and this is where the link is and why this is the root cause, if clients can accept their body, they will engage with health promoting behavior more frequently and sustainably. There's a study that was published in the Journal of Obesity, which by the way, all the study I quote here in the audio podcast can be found in the show notes. Um, But 2013 study was published in the Journal of Obesity, and it showed that there was absolutely no link between body weight and the way we felt about ourselves. Yet the finding showed a link between how we feel about ourselves and the healthy activity we engage in. Meaning the better we feel about our body, the more likely we are to take care of our body. Likewise, dissatisfaction with our body can discourage us from taking part in certain health promoting activities. So 
when we address the real root cause, we help our client heal their relationship with their body. The outcome is better and more frequent and more sustainable health promoting behavior. Isn't it why they come to us in the first place? But when we address what they think is the problem, which is their weight, and we give them a set of rules, a list of things to follow, it will work short term, not long term. And it's again, proven by science. So when we incorporate a weight neutral approach to health, body image healing, then the long term result is actually what they were looking for. Easily change habit and sustainably. And that's what we call the non-diet approach to health. And it's an approach that is recognizing that health is more than the weight on the scale. And that we will, through a different approach, this approach as we teach it in the Going to Beyond the Food Method is comprised of mindsets, right? Self-coaching skills, emotional intelligence, emotional resilience, mindfulness, being present in the moment in our body, intuitive eating and body neutrality, achieve health promoting behavior in the same desire that our client have when they first starts with us, but with a different approach. And the bonus, it's going to be sustainable and lifelong. And people are going to be happier this cycle of hate and love and hate and love that our client have had for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years will finally end. And that's what we do in the non-diet approach. Now, this is what we teach to our client. This is what I teach to my client, but this is what I also help professional learn and or transition their current health model to inside the going to be on the food mentorship program. It's a, it's a mentorship for women health practitioner. And this will be well understood why we specialize in women only in two episodes from now. So you may want to jump right there if it's available. If not, hold on to your breath. It's coming, but it's for women health professional who either want to learn this approach or transition their current practice to a non-diet practice. And it's a six month program that's very intense because we tackle both professional and uh, business skills in this program. And my goal with that is to develop powerful leader, powerful women health professional who will be out there (laughs) helping other women our client, come back to their power. I will help you get into your own power as a professional so you can give that power to your client as well. If you want to join us, you will have to submit an application. This is an interview process. I handpick a professional to be part of this program. Uh, We start the new one. Uh, We have cohorts. We go with cohorts and the next one starts July 1st or based when you're listening to this, January 1st. Um, And you can submit your application. The link is in the show notes or you can go to our website and hit the professional section of our website. I'm excited about the next three episodes coming in. I love you, sister. I love you, my dear colleague. And I look forward to hang out with you on the next podcast episode that's going to help us together liberate more women out of diet culture. <laughs>